Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca Stuchetz. I will be your host today. I'm part of the marketing team over here at Tech30. And at first and foremost, I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. Today, we have Alec Viss, who will be giving a live presentation on MathCAD Prime 6 Design of Experiments. Just to remind everyone, if you have a question at any time during this webinar, feel free to leave it in the question or chat box, and we will do our best to answer these questions at the end of the webinar. Now, I'll give a little background of who Tech30 is and what we have to offer. We are a value-added reseller of PTC software products. We're also an engineering services company that helps engineers solve problems associated with design, analysis, manufacturing, and product development. We are at our best when we can expand the business of our customers and build a community by connecting them with those who benefit with networking with each other. Our company was established in 2002, and we currently have over, over 80 employees in our office. Our headquarters is located in Mission Viejo, California, but we're distributed around the U.S. meeting the needs of our customers. Tech30 also has small business status and four business units. The first is PTC software, which we'll cover today. Second, we represent a number of additive manufacturing companies. Third, we provide engineering services, like I'd mentioned before. And fourth is Siemens software. As a PTC value-added reseller, we focus on the products from PTC, MathCAD, Creo, Windchill, ThingWorks, and Vuforia. As you can see, we also have a broad portfolio of 3D printing companies we represent. We focus on industrial use cases for 3D printing involving plastics and metals. We help our customers make additive manufacturing part of their finished product or use it for tooling, fixtures, and jigs. Before I pass the presentation over to Alec, I want to inform you of the services Tech30 provides around MathCAD. Not only do we sell the software, but we also provide a unique value-added service to ensure that our customers make the most of their software purchase. So first, what is the value of MathCAD as a software? Well, for one, it's the automation or the reuse of calculations. The collaboration, sharing of those calculations and worksheets in an easily understood document and the natural math creating calculations as you would on paper that everyone can understand with no code coding or development experience necessary. Tech30 offers conversion services for MathCAD. Customers often see the value of, of standardizing on tools such as MathCAD to make it more collaborative and efficient within your organizations. This will become more evident, especially after seeing Alex's presentation. However, one of the barriers to adopting MathCAD is getting calculations from other formats into MathCAD. Because really, who has time to bring legacy Excel files, handwritten calculations, or MathLab files into MathCAD Prime? That's where Tech30 can come in. You give us your calculations in whatever format they're in, and we'll convert the data for you and hand, hand you brand new MathCAD Prime files. We'll even train your users to use MathCAD to ensure maximum use of the tool. So if this is a situation that describes the state of your engineering calculations, please let us help you. And with that, I'm gonna turn this webinar over to Alec. Thank you, Rebecca. So today we're gonna to go over uh, design experiments in that, in the functions that MathCAD have for, has to offer with those. Um, so it comes in four broad categories, design matrices, analysis of variance, linear regression, Monte Carlo simulation. So start design matrices, um, basically describe how you're gonna run your experiment in a matrix format, and you can generate that matrix with full fact and edit that matrix with randomize and block matrices or functions. And um, in addition, there's factor screening, which you can use to see what kind of effect your factors are gonna have on the response variable, whatever that may be. And then also, determine whether or not it has an effect with an ANOVA. So with that, I'm gonna go into MathCAD and show you that. So with design matrices, um, so with this situation, we're looking at the nickel plating on a uh, hard disk. And the two factors we're gonna look at are temperature at 16 degrees 
in 32 degrees, and then a process time of four seconds and 12 seconds. So in this case, we're looking at two different factors, temperature and time. So we could say N is two. And then we're also looking at each one has two levels. So it has two possible, possible outcomes or possibilities. So the level is going to be two. So, and then we're going to use the full fact function to generate that design matrix. And this is a coded matrix. So minus one will be the low value, so to speak, and then plus one will be the high value. That doesn't necessarily need to be the case. You could use a DOE label function to, um, to make it into real values. And basically what you would do there is you would just input your um, design matrix and then what those, um, what those factors will be. So in this case, you would use um, the first column would be the string of the factors and you would put in what your low value would be and then your high value. And then same thing with factor B, you would put in four seconds and 12 seconds. And then this would generate a real valued matrix where minus one here correlates with 16 degrees. So moving on, uh, you could also edit this design matrix with um, a block function. So in case you want to separate your runs into two different groups, you can do that. So in this case, we're going to separate it in two groups, block one and block two. And say we run this experiment and we get a response with the different thicknesses in the nickel plane, which is this matrix Y. We can run a quick screen of that. And this will take the design matrix X, and, or I should say K, and then the response matrix Y. And then you can see here that you're going to see what kind of response the your variable will have when your temperature, let's say, is low or when, when the temperature is high, and then the change in that factor. And you can also look at what effects this will have um, individually with the effects function. So here you'll see the actual individual effects of having A low and B or high, et cetera. So moving on, let's say we want to see whether or not a function or a factor affects a variable. So in this case, we can say we're, we have a synthetic fiber. We want to know the tensile strength. And we want to know whether or not the cotton concentration in this fiber is affecting the tensile strength. So in this case, our factor is 1. We only are looking at concentration of cotton. And then we have five levels at 15 through 35 degrees. So we're going to generate the full fact function. And we're going to run our trials. We go to the lab, run that experiment, and then do a randomize function to randomize those runs with the different cotton concentrations. And then once we have our data for that, then we can do visualize this data with a box plot function. And we can see here that we're, it looks like there is an effect, but to quantitatively um, have that or determine that, we can use a ANOVA. And the ANOVA will take your design matrix X and your response matrix Y. So X, Y. And then it'll generate a lot of different factors and statistical values. So the one in particular we're interested in is this F stat. And we're going to generate, use another function to determine the F critical value. And this function will utilize a significance level of 5%, which is this alpha. And the first input will be a 1 minus alpha. Uh, alpha, uh, yes. And then we're going to look at the degrees of freedom for the factor. So it's 4 degrees of freedom for that first, for factor A, and then 20 degrees of freedom for the error. So this is a 2.866 is your critical F stat or F critical value. And then our F stat is larger than that. So we can confidently say that uh, we have the concentration of cotton does have an effect on our tensile strength. So um, in addition, we can do a linear regressions with MathCAD. And then some common functions are polyfit and polyfit C. And we can also analyze the quality of that, those lines with polyfit stat. So again, we're going to go to MathCAD, go look at that. So in this case, we know 
the data we're looking at is a distance travel for say driving and the time it takes to travel that distance. So we know the longer you drive, the farther you'll go, but we want to know how much farther you'll go, let's say. And so we're going to, in this case, we're going to use a polyfit C function to determine uh, the coefficients of this linear regression. So we're going to put in X, T, we're going to look at first order linear regression, and then we're going to look at a confidence interval of 98% and then generate those values. So we can see here that we have the coefficients in this second column and then the standard error and then the confidence intervals for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to index out those two coefficients here and make a function for that and then graph that function. So we can see here that the plot plot fits pretty well. In addition, there's other alternative methods you can use to find these coefficients, such as the intercept function, which will generate you just the y-intercept. And then in addition, you can use the slope function, which can generate just the slope. And then you can see those two values match up what we have up here. Also, you can just use a line function to generate both values at the same time. So uh, and that'll be in a vector. In addition, so in addition, you can analyze how well this plot fits with the polyfit stat function, and you generate that, and it'll determine the R squared, adjust R squared, and many different statistical methods to determine how well your line is actually fitting your model. In addition, you can just use a polyfit function instead of polyfit C. Um, the difference between them is polyfit will generate a function, will return you a function, versus polyfit C will return a matrix with those coefficients inside. So you can also make higher order um, regression fits. So in this case, you'll do two, or you can do three, and then however, whatever order you want to do for your regression. Okay. And then lastly, um, another thing you can do is a Monte Carlo simulation. So Monte Carlo simulations would be a situation where you have some kind of random variable and you just want to know what how your model's behaving given some factors that are behaving randomly. So going back to MathCAD, the way this would work is say we have our model, in this case it'd be 2x plus 0.5y. We're going to say our x value has a normal distribution, our y value has a uniform distribution. And then we're going to take those distributions, we're going to center them. So based on the means and standard error of those, um, of those distributions, so in this case, the mean of x we can say is 7.5 with a standard error or standard deviation of 1.2. And then do the same for y with the uniform distribution. And then in addition, we're going to set an upper limit on y as 8.5. And then those means and standard deviations, we're going to put in our values matrix. It's, we're going to set the number of samples we want to have, the limit, um, the limits we're going to set and do another matrix as well. So this first column corresponds to X. We don't have any limitations on it. And this Y column, we only have an upper limit. So we're going to use that to generate a Monte Carlo, this M. And this is kind of what the data looks like. So in this first column is your X, second column is your Y, your random values. And then your output is going to be the third column. And then you can graph those functions. So in this first graph, you'll see the response versus the random x value. And then the second graph is the response with respect to the y value that has a uniform distribution. And you also make a 3D plot with that just to visualize all what it'll actually look like. And you can see here um, <clears throat> that what the output looks like. All right. So in conclusion, MathCat has to offer a number of different tools to help you with your design experiments. And really, this is just scratching a surface on what MathCat is capable of. Um, so I hope you learned something today. And have a wonderful day. Thank you, Alec. We actually have a few questions. Um, the first question being from Bethany Runyon. And their question is, I saw that you used the block function earlier in the presentation. What is an example of when you would use that? 
Yeah, so basically you would use the block function in a situation where you had you need to split your runs into two groups. So one could be you're doing your experiment in two different labs with two different sets of equipment with different calibrations and you want to account for that and see if that's affecting your data. Another reason you could do this is, is if you're doing experiments that has male and female populations and you want to know if your male and female, the fact that they're male and female is affecting your data. So. Okay, great, thank you. Um, another question comes from Alex McNabb, and their question is, when you were running the ANOVA, why did you use the randomized function? Yeah, so that, um, that's over here. Uh, you use a randomized to basically change in case, to account for any potential changes in your response based on the order. So. Some cases where it would matter is if you're doing an experiment on the number on mouthwashes and you want to know what kind of effect your mouthwash has. But when you have a population, you're reusing it, you would want to randomize the order you use your mouthwash because it can have a cumulative effect on your mouth and you that's not necessarily what you want to test. Um, so that would be a situation where you'd want to randomize. In this situation, this could be have to do with the equipment. So maybe the equipment does a tensile strength test and then um, maybe it affects the next tensile strength test right after so okay and the last question is from craig hamilton and his or their question is are those the only linear regression methods mathcad has to offer no you can do uh that's actually a picture in my powerpoint um, so you can actually do a median fit, which is this graph right here. So basically this graph is showing you that you have some, some data which is represented by these dots or these crosses, and you do a median fit, which is this black line, and which doesn't take into account this outlier or hold as much weight to it as say a normal sum squares fit, which is the red line. So if you had, some outliers in your data, maybe you would want to do that significantly affecting your linear regression, then you would want to do a medium fit instead of a, just a normal fit. Um, and then there's other fits on top of that, that you could do a whole webinar in and of itself. But yeah, there's lots of different methods. Okay, it looks like that was all of the questions. And just as a reminder, I highly encourage you all to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we have previous Creo, MathCAD, and Windchill webinars and tutorials. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter as, as well, just to be updated on any upcoming events, webinars, and exclusive deals from PTC. And with that, once again, thank you all for attending, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.